What's wrong with him? I don't know. <laughs> We're talking about Game of Thrones or something like that. And then it just kind of went into this kind of brand mode. Have you tried tapping him? Of course I've tried tapping him. What do you take me for? Try again. Alright. But I swear to God, oh day, fuck all. We need to review Kick-Ass 2. Eh, uh, why? Because it's a film. I, I know it's a film, fucked hard. Why do we need to review it? We've been blind. We've been blind, my friend. Screw this, Robert. I'm going on your laptop. Eh, uh, how have we been blind, Robert? Kick-Ass 2 has more problems than we thought. I need to review it. Now! Kick-Ass 2 is a great film. Exactly. That is why we must warn him of the problems. It's been out for more than a year, Robert. How the fuck are you going to review it? You're right. I need to be smart about this. Any ideas? Hey, Robert, have you seen the new Nostalgia Critic video? That's it! We do a top 10! Robert, just calm down. And this will be called The Top 10 Things Wrong with Kick Ass 2. Top 10 Things Wrong with Kick Ass 2? What the fuck can I tell is that? That sounds like a romantic comedy. And this section will be called Full Metal Reviews. Yes, yeah, I forgot to be fucking kidding me. Hello and welcome to Full Metal Reviews. We are not calling it that. Yes, we are. No, we're not. <clears throat> anyway, Kickass was a film that seemed doomed from the start. Everyone thought that it would fail and that it was too violent. This caused the film to go independent, and after being distributed by Universal, it was a success, making more than triple its budget. So obviously there would be a sequel, and on the 8th of May 2012, it was confirmed. Unfortunately, it didn't make as much as the original, and was critically panned. But audiences responded more positively. The film even made it as one of my favourite films of that year. Until I noticed the problems. While some don't make as much of a difference, others are just horrific, and even some managed to insult the fan base of the comics. So let's jump straight into it. This is the top 10 things wrong with Kick-Ass 2. Robert, there are more than 10 things on that list. I was just going to get to that. God, you just have to suck the joy out of everything. Now, as the spoiler alerts have explained. Sorry. There are more than 10 things on this list. So let's look briefly at the things that didn't make this list. How does Mindy have a motorcycle? Well, it would make sense if she had stolen it. So, Mindy, a 15 year old girl, somehow manages to steal a fully customised motorcycle which even has Hit Girl on it. I'm guessing you've never seen Pin My Ride. Do you have any idea how customisation motorcycles work? Nope. No idea. Let's move on. The point is, she's 15 and somehow has a fully customised motorcycle. Robert, are you just going to nitpick the entire film? No. Next up, the shark looks fake as hell. Works like he is. Alright, review, Sheriff. And there's a line from Amazing Swimman too. Are you two just going to entertain me for the entire review? Since you dragged us into this. Yes. You get what you pay for, I guess. You're not paying us. Well, I'd like to think I am. Who thinks like that? Robert, obviously. Anyways, Robert, what were you saying about the shark looking fake? It looks fake. And... That's it. Is he okay? Yeah, he's just casual having a mental breakdown. <laughs> Nothing serious then. And finally, the ages don't make sense. I'm being completely serious. How the hell is Dave still in school? It's been four years since the events of the previous film, during which Dave was about 16, making Dave about 20 in this film. So how is he still in school? He's a teacher. What? It doesn't make any sense. Especially when you realise that Mindy is 15, so either Dave is 20 and still somehow still in school, or Dave has somehow managed to stop aging and is now in some never-ending teenage loop thing. So basically, Groundhog's Day. So guys, can we actually get into the top 10 now? Yeah, I just had to give everyone a warm-up before the main event. Right. So now that's over, let's get on with the top 10. Number 10. The deleted scenes. Usually when a director deletes scenes, they have good reason for it. Usually. For some reason these scenes were deleted from the film. Why? They were shit. 
One more word and I'll have Eisenhower come through that door to Schwanz. I have no idea why they were deleted. They gave great character development, told important parts of the story. They even gave comic book fans a chance to experience some of the best parts from the comic. And it had the best line ever written. Avengers Assemble, asshole. Are you sure that's the exact line from the comic? Okay, so it wasn't copied perfectly. Then it's not the same line. I still think it's pretty badass. Robert, are you trying to make this any longer? We haven't even passed ten yet. Sorry. Continue. The point is, these scenes are amazing and they were deleted for... Wait for it... PACING! And because somehow we can read his mind. <coughs> Number 9. Hit Girl doesn't have any memorable lines. Before I start, I'm going to give you a few seconds to remember Hit Girl's lines from the first film. Okay, now try and remember Hit Girl's lines from Kick-Ass 2. If nothing is coming to your mind, you are not alone. Hit Girl doesn't really have anything memorable to say. That's right, the girl who shocks people with her foul mouth and whose lines stuck in the back of your heads after your first viewing is left with no memorable lines in this film. This is probably her most memorable line in the film. If I ever catch you robbing again, Shipburger, I'm gonna go study a rapey on your ass and cut your hand off. How far we have sunk. When did we hit the iceberg? What? You know, because <laughs> the Titanic hit an iceberg and sunk. <laughs> okay. I'll never make a joke again, Robert. That might be best. Number 8. The Mindy is attracted to men's body subplot. This subplot actually makes sense. Mindy is 15 and would therefore find other people attractive, whether they're male or female. This just doesn't work though. It starts off pretty well with jokes about Stanley and Holy Shares Union J. Thank God that's over with. Wait a minute. What do they mean fun of their own fan base? Wow. Union J? You're okay in my books then. Just keep your shirts on. So anyway, let's continue with Mindy's subplot. She gets her heart broken by some guy which she only went on a date with despite Dave and 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 Okay, so we just forgot about that subplot for half the film, but it's about to get resolved. Your whole lives are calling us. Let's see how this is resolved. You okay? What? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. Here. Yay? That's it. No big interesting conclusion. Nope, she just shakes her head and walks away. What a satisfying end to this subplot. I swear they could resolve it faster. Sure they forgot about it for half the film, but this could have still been handled better. All they had to do was take their time. I don't know, maybe cement 10 seconds on the conclusion instead of one, and this might have actually worked. Let me take his shirt off anyway. In the last scene he was changing and he told Mindy to... Turn around. I don't know, maybe he wanted to show Mindy's body or something. Number 7. The Ending. Sorry Jeff, but for this one you have no excuse. What were you going for with this ending? Did you want the series to end or not? I don't get it. You, you stop people dressing up as superheroes, you end the whole kick, hit girl kick-ass partnership and end this series sort of way. And then you show kick-ass training. What a genuine badass. Who can really kick ass? As Iron Man. <sighs> then if we're not confused enough, we, and then after credits we find out that the motherfucker is still alive. Maybe it was a joke. It wasn't a very funny one. 
The shark bit his dick off. Isn't that funny, guys? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I think it is. All it did was confuse everyone who watched it. There's no way of telling whether it's setting up a sequel or not, and considering that Kick-Ass 3 is unlikely, this will have to be the end that we stick with for the series. Aren't we lucky? Number 6. The Scene Runtime One of the things that amazed me when I first watched this film was how they managed to base this film off two comics and somehow make it shorter than the original. That was when I first watched this. Unfortunately, they didn't do it too well, as Barely any scenes are over a minute. All that happens in these scenes is we are told the main things we need to know for the story to make sense. And thanks to that we barely get any character development, except from the hit girl. Things feel rushed, and worst of all, it feels more like a summary or a highlight reel than a film at points. I wonder how Aaron Johnson would have reacted. I'm going to be kick-ass again. Perfect, Aaron! You described perfectly that Dave wanted to be kick-ass! Thanks, Mr. Wadlow, but shouldn't we give the audience an explanation as to why? You been smoking something or something? Nobody wants reasons, they just want to see people get their asses kicked. But kick-ass is meant to be relatable. <sighs> Look, kid, I got two comics to get through. You want character development? Put in your goddamn narration. It's two more weeks than you're off to Godzilla and Avengers, Aaron. Two more weeks. Yeah. I don't think Jeff Wadlow is an asshole. And, and look, I know that, but it gets a point across, doesn't it? What point? The point you just made five seconds ago! Sorry, I wasn't listening. Oh, prick. Jeff Wilder doesn't seem to understand the difference between an adaption and a summary. I mean it! You'll just sit there watching well put together scenes just to have them end within seconds. It feels like I'm watching the fucking film and fast forward. Even important scenes are sped through like films on some kind of ecstasy. Here's a tip, Jeff, just between me and you. We don't need things thrown onto the screen every two seconds. We want chances for character development or just a chance to let the series moments in the film sink in. Hell, when Mr. Lozuski dies, we didn't even get a chance to experience the emotions that Dave is going through. Instead, we get a few seconds of Dave crying and then guess what the film cuts to? Dave's dad being hung because screw him what human emotion we want to see characters get hung. The comic knows this better than you do. Here's a better example. Do you know why we felt sad when Big Daddy died in the first film? It wasn't because it was Nick Cage or because an 11 year old just lost her father. It was because the film slowed the fuck down and allowed us to feel emotion. Sorry, well, that was a fun run wasn't it? <laughs> just you wait. The best is yet to come. Number 5. Too close to the comic. What? What country are you from? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Wait, just let me explain. Vincent. Yeah? Here we have. Thank you. What? Don't say that, you got a death wish. What? He didn't mean it. I swear. You do realize you're talking to yourself, right? But WTF are you talking about? I don't know how to say this, but you just started quoting Pulp Fiction. Once you're aware of you'd finally lost it or not. So WTF with a TF you're trying to say is I can actually say the W word. Yes, I think. What? What number are we again? Too close to the com comic. Ah, good thing death sentence. You've got some explaining to do. One, one of the things that made it very interesting to read both the comic and watch the first film was that they went in different directions story-wise. Both had the same characters and the same opening, but by the end of them it was very obvious that both had went in very different di directions, like the sort of parallel universe that ran between them. This is not only what made it interesting to read the comic, but also opened a lot of doors for potential sequels to the film. Unfortunately, these doors were almost shut thanks to this film. Almost all the changes done in the first film were undone in this. 
I don't have problems with the films being close to the source material, but when one of the best parts of the previous film was that it followed a different story to the source material, you're best only taking what you need to make the film work. Unfortunately, Jeff Ladlow didn't get that message as the story is almost exactly the same. This would be fine if the original wasn't so different. There is nothing wrong with slightly following it, but when everything is happening almost exactly the same as in the comic, it takes you out of the film. Fair enough, some scenes are necessary to include, like the graveyard attack or meeting of justice forever. What isn't is when everything else happens the same way. Kate even breaks up with Dave, which brings them into the same position he is in the comics. The only noticeable change is that Hit Girl leaves New York, but that is only because they weren't able to set up a sequel by having men to get arrested. Fair to God, if there is a kick-ass three confirmed, no, I'm gonna have well, a... you do realise I have a dream. Please don't sing. The villains in Kick-Ass 3 are already dead in the films, so if it would have to be Uncle Jorah. <laughs> Damn, that would be awesome. Number 4. Katie's Breakup. Remember when I mentioned Katie's Breakup? Actually, let's just watch it. You're a hit girl. You're gonna star on a team. You can't just quit. This is who you are. Not anymore, Dave. I'm sorry, but it's over. I'm done. They aren't. Just leave me alone. Ah, uh, can you stop apologizing? Yep, they are. I don't know what's worse. That you're fucking a ninth grader? What the fuck? Oh, that you just got dumped by one. Pedophile freak. It's not like that. Then what is it like? Please, tell me. I can't. It's due with the... This thing. I've got a secret for you. You remember Malik? Dude who volunteers at your needle exchange? His baton is so much bigger than you. What? Oh. And by baton, I mean penis. Yeah, I, I got that. Thanks. 15 gets you 20, pervert. <sighs> what just happened? Okay, so... Katie is angry with Dave because she thinks he is cheating on her with Mindy. But she is actually cheating on him. And she is angry that he is apparently cheating on her, right? Not only is this cheatception, it just also doesn't make any sense. You do know that inception is to plant an idea in someone's head that they think they can come up with? Yes. Then what's with cheatception? It isn't even a cheat within a cheat, and that which is the main confusion with inception. Thanks for correcting me. Just- You're welcome. Just because Dave is hanging around with Mindy doesn't mean they're in a relationship. Actually, this would be more plausible if it wasn't Mindy, who, to be honest, Katie should know about. Maybe not as Hat Girl, but what you're telling us is that it's been about four years since the first film, and Katie has never met Mindy, who's basically like a little sister to Dave. Then again, this is the same world that Marcus forgets who's meant to be looking out for Mindy, which is another reason why Katie should know about Mindy. Dave is meant to be looking out for Mindy, and somehow she doesn't know who she is. So let's move away from the Mindy part, and move on to the cheating part. Katie is cheating on Dave! They seem so happy! Not an alternative opening. Not everyone will have seen the alternative opening, and that doesn't defend it in any way. We are talking about in the film, and in the film, Katie is cheating on Dave for no reason. Number three. Mindy causes Mr. Lazowski's death. Okay, here's one that just pisses me off. Mindy? Dave? I need your help. My dad's been arrested. They think he's kick-ass. Can you talk to Marcus? I'm grounded. So? So? What you said? So that means I, I can't get involved. Okay, look. I wish I could wait, help. wait a second. What? Hey, Dave. Are you on the phone? Look, I gotta go, okay? No. Sorry, Dave. Mindy, wait, wait. What? What? You know, Robert, if you keep saying that, you might start the whole Pulp Fiction thing again. This scene just doesn't make any sense! Why doesn't Mindy do anything? All she needed to do was go down and speak to Marcus. Just go down the stairs and hand him the phone. Marcus isn't some sort of psychopath. If Mindy goes down the stairs, he isn't going to whip out a chainsaw. If anything, he'll take the phone, send her back to her room, and I don't think Mindy cares that much about her phone. Anyway, no harm done, I guess. I love you.
do that. Or a lot of harm done. Dave, I'm so sorry. You hate me for not helping. Yes! You could have saved him, and you didn't even need to be fucking hate girl! You just needed to walk down a few stairs and give the phone to Marcus. No, not even a little bit. You were right. He gave it up. If I had to, my dad would still be alive. Well, that's partly true, but you're missing the point. Mindy could have saved him. The only person I blame is myself. So, not even the motherfucker. Wow. David's more forgiving than Superman. Oh yeah. Bad example. Number two. The sixth stick scene. So if you think that the previous scene was out of character for Mindy, this scene will have you begging for the last. As in this scene, not Mindy attempts to deal with the bullies. But for the sake of this review and your entertainment, We'll treat this scene as if it actually is Mindy. We? Yes, we. <laughs> you said he's French when you said that, Robert. What did I tell you about making jokes? Sorry, just because you've no, no sense of humour. Can we go, just for this scene, I really don't want to sit through it again. Yeah, same. <sighs> okay, but only this scene. The next one is too dangerous to be taken on alone. Okay then. Anyway, so we on. You've really got to fix your door. I've been trying to fix it for weeks, I just gave up. Too much kick-ass trying to work the damn door, almost crushing my bones. Okay, first things first, allow me to explain what happened in the previous scene. Mindy got date ditched, so she went to Dave for advice, who told her to be herself in front of them. Now that we've caught up, why the hell is she putting on makeup? Did you listen to Dave in any way? The only time you put on makeup was for that date. The rest of the time, you never put on makeup. Okay, okay, maybe she's just putting on makeup to make them think that they have won, and then she will show them she is not to be fucked with. Yep, seems like I was right. That's what's happening. Now she's going to humiliate them. I'm thinking with brains this time because she doesn't want everyone knowing she's hit girl. Lois, you don't need these axe wounds. If I can dress like them, so can you. Yes! You go, Mindy! It's a gift from some drug dealer who went missing. Yeah! Wait! What? It's fine. She's not going to do something incredibly stupid. That was just a joke. It doesn't matter what costume I wear, yours or mine. I'm a superhero. Do I even need to explain? Mindy treasures her secret identity. Hell, Dave only need to take down a fucking drug empire to find out her secret identity. So why are you telling them you're a superhero? Not only that, but in the previous scene you told Dave they were evil. And Hit Girl in no circumstances would ever tell her enemy her secret identity. Look. It can't get any worse. What's that? A ghetto cell phone? <gasps> Gonna call for help with a comeback? Hmm. Actually, my daddy bought this from a disgruntled DARPA employee. You see, it was designed for crowd control but deemed too severe. It emits a pulse that creates spontaneous nausea and diarrhea. It's official! Hey, girls on crack! Because we feel fabulous. Not for long. Just kill me now. You win! Just. God damn it! Oh my god! That was my reaction when I first saw this scene. Please, you win. But she said, please, no more! I don't want to win. I just want to make the world a better place. No, you don't. <laughs> Who are you and what have you done with the real Mindy? Where do I begin? Begin with this scene. Okay, let's begin with everything she did wrong. Number one, putting on makeup. Number two, 
telling everyone she's a superhero. Number three, the fucking sex dick. Why didn't you just tell T T to face instead of doing the exact opposite of what he said? At no point did he say, put on makeup, tell him you're a superhero, and use the worst machine in cinema history. This is incredibly out of character, as not only did she tell them that she is a superhero, which as we've already established, she would never do, but she used a device which Hit Girl would never use. This is because Hit Girl is more in knives and guns, and while she obviously doesn't want to go to school with those, or even kill the girls, she could do what happened in the comics. Yes, I know what I said. I didn't like it that it was so close to the source material, but when a scene like this is so out of character, it's a good idea to follow the source material. So in the comic, Mindy waits until Brooke, or Debbie in the comics, goes to the bathroom and knocks her unconscious with a taser. When she wakes, she finds herself hanging off the school building, where Mindy pretends that she was too late to apologise and drops her off the building into a large bed. Now this may seem over the top to some, but you need to remember that Mindy has grown up her entire life believing that everything can be solved with violence. I mean she dresses up as a superhero in her spare time. She isn't a, your normal teenage girl, which is why this part of the comic works so well. It shows both Mindy's sadistic side and her psychotic, as well as her intelligence. You do require a bit of intelligence to plan something like that. So. Was there any good things that came out of this scene? Just one line. Boo fucking him. Boo fucking you. Number one. Guys? Oh, thank God. <laughs> you know, it appears that I may have actually forgotten to put number one on the you, you shit. Michael Bay's vision for a Transformers 4 movie. This Transformers was the best film I've watched yet. So good. I swear to God, man. Special effects at this storyline are great. So what were you saying? Nothing. Anyway. Okay, let's go. Number one. Uh, what are you doing? Introducing the number. You don't do that! I do that! Amateur. Number one. Todd. Yes, anyone who's even a little bit of a fan of Kick-Ass will understand this one, with the terrible recast. So who'd they get the point? You guys watched Spider-Man last night? It's a weird that Aunt Maggie's are kind of hard. Not if you're a granny flammer. Who and the uh, deadly fuck is that? Todd. No, that's not Todd. He looks older than all the other characters. Tell me this wee fuck not his name high school. It's not in high school. He's in high school. Doesn't mean you lied to him, Robert. The fuck? Great, now we're just gonna have to pretend like we've never seen this before. Sorry. <sighs> great. Let's see what next great scene Todd's in. Oh, not this scene again. A freshman day. Two old salty dogs. What's the problem? Dress in the pill play ball? Right? What does that even mean? I'm not sure, but I think Todd is encouraging pedophilia. If that's the case, then I think Jeff Wadlow has completely missed the point with the saving himself joke when Hit Girl rescues Kickass in the first film. It's about Todd's feelings towards superheroes, not young girls. How many more scenes? I fucking hate the guy already. Let's just keep going. I don't think there's that many. Guys, what are you talking about? Uh, nothing. Nothing? Yeah, Todd, nothing. Well, this guy just fuck off. Alright. You know, guys. Todd, wait. Your prayer has been answered. Not for long. Stop peeking, man. You're gonna ruin it. Can I really kill this guy now? Please? Where the hell did you get that from? You're that. Never mind that. How are you going to kill him? He's not real. I'll find a way. Don't encourage him. Sorry, this scene might not be that bad. You can't just copy Dave's name, you knob gobbler. Okay, um. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. Come on, guys. Let's see how he fucks us up. Ass kicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was actually pretty fun. Maybe he's not such a bad guy after all. Actually, I think that was more than Mark. Miller. Series 
quickly. You're such a dick, Marty. Well, I escalated quickly. I know this is why you guys don't text me back. I'm not an actual idiot. Well, you could have fooled me, ass licker. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck can you find that funny? They're being cruel to that wee cunt. Did that just happen? I guess my funny line is sick as in love with him. You fucking kidding me? Let's just move on. What we'll killed Joy? <laughs> no, well, screw you guys. Come on. No, really. Hey, fuck you guys. I'm gonna go follow my own team. Oh, God. It's pretty obvious what's gonna happen next. You're gonna hate him again pretty soon. That sad sack is not kick ass. I've seen kick ass. He's like my age. This guy's old enough to be his father. No shit, right? <sighs> There's no way you can be that stupid. I just thought it was funny he said that. Because he is kick ass's father. Who? Mr. Lazuski is kick ass's dad. Nope, fuck it. I'm done. No, 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 no. I think no. I'm going to join him. Nope, said that. He'll be back. No. He always is. No. No. Just no. let him have his little no. ego trip. No. No. No! 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 You finished? No! No! Stay there, big boy. Let's continue on. Oh, please do. Yeah, yeah. You're not, you're not gonna tell anyone. Okay, I can't take this in now. There's no way that Todd could be that boy who's so stupid. Of course he'll tell everybody. He's a fucking psychopath supervillain that the cops have been chasing for most of the film. How did they not realise this when the crew knows that Kickass has been arrested and- Let me handle this. Todd is not that stupid. He should know about the motherfucker and she can clearly know he is not to speak to him. The police are after the motherfucker, so clearly he should know that he's a very bad guy. Plus, what the hell are you doing telling everyone that Dave is kick-ass, you fucking dumbass? You should know enough about comics to know why a superhero has a secret identity. So not only have you failed at being a friend, but you've also failed at being a comic book nerd. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to ask the question that we've all been wondering for the whole film. Where the fuck is the real Todd? There. Don't tempt me! Game over, man. Game over. Oh. We have endured torture, but we must keep going. For Matthew Vaughan, for Mark Miller, for Evan Peters, we must keep going. There are only a few scenes left, and then we are free to ignite the revolution against Augustus, whatever his name is. You're right. We must prevail. We must never give up. For Evan Peters! For Evan Peters! We are gonna kill Kick-Ass! The very first superhero! Together! We are gonna cut him up into little pieces, beat that shit to MC Shark, and post that all over YouTube. For real! <laughs> He's kidding, right? Motherfucker don't care. Yeah. Remember that big epic speech you said five seconds ago? I've forgotten it. Me too. That reveal was so stupid, I think it gave me amnesia. That's what it means to be evil. We, my friends, are the real one percent. Are we meant to be happy that you realise this? Because all I'm thinking is, finally. So, as we continue on, we get everyone's favourite good guy turned bad redeems himself. And I think Jeff Wadlow hates me as he manages to merge number one and two together. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Ass kicker. So basically, here's what happened. Marty had the sit stick. Marty drops it when he falls, which arms it. Todd then hits the supervillain with it, and Todd is accepted back in. The team realised that he wasn't even in the team, and that he basically killed Pavel Lazuski. Of course not! Todd joins back in and never mentions it. 
So that was Kick-Ass 2, and despite its problems, it's actually pretty good. The acting is great with the exception of Todd. Alan Taylor-Johnson and Chloe Grace Moretz are perfect as Hick Girl and Kick-Ass. The script is funny and smart with the exceptions of a few scenes and arcs. Jeff Wadlow may have not lived up to Matthew Vaughan's fantastic first film, but he does a good job, especially with removing the unsuitable content from the comic and turning them into jokes. As well as that, the addition of Ian Glenn as Uncle Ralph is amazing, with his scene pretty much stealing the show. The music is great like the first and in some cases better. If you are into the superhero comedy genre, I would highly recommend this series. This has been Full Metal Reviews and I will see you next time. Let me show you what real evil looks like. Oh, I must be tripping. Do people still say that? What? Tripping. Do people still say that? Yeah, it's common language. Alright, just wondering. Where I come from, nobody dares say that. You from the future or something? Yeah. And in the future, if you say any outdated words, you're instantly put to death. Jesus, really? No, I'm just fucking with you. Do I seriously look any older than you? Well, in the future, you may have had some sort of age-removing surgery. Well, it's fair to say that I haven't changed much. Should have known you say something like that. So, if you're not from the future, where are you from? Okay. Allow me to explain. There are tons of parallel worlds with different versions of you and me. I've seen Doctor Who. What's Doctor Who? Never mind, you were saying? There are tons of parallel worlds. There's even one where you're in a group. <laughs> me in a group. I don't see that happening. It's called Watch the Films. WTF. Well done, you get the joke. So are you from WTF? God no! I went mean, crazy, went and joined the League of Assassin's Creed fanboys. Why don't we ever get something cool like that? We just did. I would like to do a review with you. Wait, what? You and me in a review. Don't you think that might be a bit bad? You know, showing two of me. Ah, don't worry, it's the internet. Nobody believes anything they see on the internet. Okay then, what did you have in mind? 2012.